Hey guys, it's Jeanette with Anderson Alchemy and I am here to give you your astrology forecast for the month of November 2017. So if you see my other videos, you know how I roll. I like to give lots of dates. This time around, I will uh, condense it down to just the major planetary aspects. And if you want more of the um, the lesser known aspects, definitely check me out on uh, either Facebook or Instagram because I do weekly astrological forecasts and I go a little bit more in depth with what's happening uh, day to day. So if you want something a little bit more detailed, uh, you can go there and that way I can keep this uh, monthly forecast a little bit more short and um, easy to kind of sift through if you're looking for specific dates. Um, I will say overall, it looks like this month will be a little bit easier compared to other months, not as much crazy energy, um, still powerful, but it should feel actually like this month is going to be a bit of a breather. So um, go ahead and get some paper and a pen to jot down these particular dates. And um, yeah, let's get started. Oh, actually, before we get started. I am currently taking appointments for 2018 forecasts. So if you want a 2018 um, astrology forecast or a tarot one, you can book a session with me uh, by shooting me an email at the email below, blessedinfinity at gmail.com, or you can book a session on my website, andersonalchemy.com, and I would be more than happy to help you. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so right off the bat, at the top of the month, we have Saturn, which is in Sagittarius, squaring Chiron. Now, this day is going to be a day of trigger. So again, Thursday, November 2nd. So just basically um, the days right before that and days after that may be a little bit tough emotionally. Um, whatever issues that you um, are having or any of those kind of insecurities may get triggered around this time. So just try to stay, you know, in your center, try to stay focused um, and not take things personally, but rather see them as opportunities to heal. Right. Um, next on Friday, November 3rd, we have a full moon in Taurus. So this should be really yummy energy. It actually will be happening at 1023 and I believe it's a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, so you can, you know, uh, adapt that to whatever time zone that you're in. So that will be, like I said, beautiful energy. Um, it's Taurus is a great manifesting energy because it is earth, earth energy. Um, but also on that day, we have Venus, which is in Libra, uh, doing two really important aspects. So she's going to be sextiling Saturn. And then she's going to be opposing Uranus, okay? And then also on that day, the sun is trining Neptune, which is retrograde in Pisces. So there's a lot of energy happening basically around those two days, that Thursday and Friday, November 2nd and 3rd. So, you know, like I said, expect high emotions, possibly trigger, but also um, expect that you are able to move forward in your manifestation goals. You may be able to move forward on, you know, some business projects, um, you, you know, maybe jobs, stuff. Uh, maybe you have a big break or you meet someone who really can um, uh, advocate for you in a different arena to kind of be a, a gatekeeper, so to speak. But um, it, it looks like this is this energy is really asking you to um, dive deep and think about what your goals are, why they are what they are, like the reasons behind them, um, and really get in touch with your particular passion. But again, this energy is really feeling more money oriented or business oriented um, as opposed to something else like um, uh, personal health or relationships and things like that. All right. So moving on, we jump to Thursday, November 9th, and we have the sun, which is still in Scorpio, uh, sextiling Pluto, which is still currently retrograde in Capricorn. So this sextile energy is going to be really nice. Sextiles are always nice because they're kind of that um, lazy river go with the flow energy. So you should find, though, because these are two really powerful forces, obviously, in our uh, experience and in our cosmos, that... Uh, you may be able to maneuver a bit more in terms of how you exercise your power. Maybe you'll be able to leverage your power a little bit more to get what you want. Um, and maybe if you felt like you've been in a situation where 
um, it's been a little too structured or you've been feeling a little too restricted that you are able to, um, you know, have some, some, uh, some flexibility here, but still in a really empowered and true to self energy and a true to self flow. Now on Saturday, November 11th, we have Saturn trining Uranus. So this is to me is a really important day um, because what, you know, when I saw this aspect immediately, the, the feeling that I got was that there is a massive amount of divine help that comes through. Um, you know, spiritual advocates on your behalf, whether you're your angels or your, your ancestors, like really working behind the scenes to make something happen for you. Maybe that's, um, you know, people who are in positions of power that are able to protect you or, um, you know, make a way for you in some regard. It's a really beautiful energy. Uh, and again, it speaks to um, self mastery and breaking through. Um, any kind of restrictions that may have held you back and, and going to that next level. So that's going to be a really important day, Saturday, November 11th. And then on Monday, November 13th, we have Venus conjuncting Jupiter in Scorpio. So when I think of this, I'm like, money, money, money. <laughs> uh, so if you have like, you know, any events possibly over that weekend or maybe that day, uh, you should possibly see an increase in money. Although I will say because, you know, Venus and uh, Jupiter are not necessarily one for self-discipline, you may also end up be spending a lot of money around this time. But because it is that Scorpio energy is going to be something that you really love and you're passionate about so it may be an investment that um you feel justified in make it in making so if so you know do what you got to do right and then also on that day we have mercury squaring neptune so this isn't really too much of a, a tough aspect to me it's probably going to be more so a feeling of like brain fog or um maybe a sense of um potentially overreaching or thinking that you have more available to you in terms of opportunities than are actually there. It's kind of like a, a dreamy um, kind of energy. So uh, that's where that possibly may be able to uh, play into that Venus and Jupiter conjunction energy in Scorpio of maybe like overspending possibly. But, um, you know, it, like I said, it, it feels more like a minor aspect. I think overall it's going to be a really positive energy with uh, Jupiter and Venus. And then on Thursday, November 16th, we have Venus trining uh, Neptune, uh, which again is in uh, Pisces and it is uh, retrograde. And we also have the Sun trining Chiron which is also retrograde in Pisces. So Sun and Venus are both trining these energies. And so Chiron is all about the wound and healing. And what I see at this point is that, you know, if you've really been doing your work and you know that I'm a big advocate about, you know, looking into self and, you know, doing your work, assessing what's really yours and what's not, um, releasing that which no longer serves you, all of that kind of thing. I think that this is going to be a massive day, an opportunity for clearing for you. Uh, maybe, you know, having a conversation with a family member that's been long overdue and you guys really make a breakthrough and there's a healing and a peace that comes that you probably never expect to have. Um, you know, it can just be a personal experience, but whatever it is, you know, and it is going to depend on your personal astrology chart, but um, I do see this, see this as a beautiful healing day and not in that kind of triggering energy as we saw at the beginning of the month with Saturn, but this feels more like, okay, the universe is stepping in to help you. All right, so if we skip ahead to Saturday, November 18th, we do have a new moon in Scorpio. And that's going to be happening at 3.42 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, Scorpio energy, as I'm sure you have already heard in my tarot uh, reading videos for the month of November, I absolutely love Scorpio energy because it's so powerful. It really... Um, gets you in tune with what your passion is like truly your soul's passion it doesn't really beat around the bush um yeah it's just it's really it's such a multi-dimensional expression of fixed energy that's not it's not rigid but it's actually so very expansive like scorpio energy is so multi-dimensional and 
uh, to me. I, I love it. Uh, so this is going to be really nice energy because new moons really do clear out the old. And that's one of the reasons why that day on uh, the 16th with the sun and Venus um, trining in the, that Piscean energy you will be able to get a lot of that healing work done because this is really just going to come in and clean the slate. And I think, you know, in the days after that new moon energy kind of wane, wanes, you will um, really get a clearer sense of the new you that has been molded and crafted in the fire, um, you know, from the summer and maybe all year. And I think you may be really happy about what you see. All right, on the next day, we have uh, Sunday, November 19th, Mars squaring Pluto. Okay, so this is going to be one of the other probably tough days in the month besides, you know, on the second, because Mars and Pluto are all about power, passion, um, power over, power with, power structures, all of that kind of thing. With these two energies, you know, Mars is more the personal power. Pluto can be more structural or outside power. These are in a square. And normally I don't see squares necessarily as a tough energy. It just depends on, you know, what all is going on. But I think this is actually going to be a tough day. And it may be one that is rife for uh, conflicts uh, or like someone trying to make a, a power move over you. Or maybe you're the one doing that. Um, if you don't experience any conflicts or any kind of triggers in that regard, this may mean that you are taking a, a risk and really, you know, pushing forward on something that that you want. I would just say, honestly, just just be careful. For the most part, this month is is pretty, you know, pretty chill, like I said. Um, but this might be that that time of the month where um, you are a little quick to fly off the handle. All right. Now, on Tuesday, November 21st, we have the sun moving into Sagittarius. So we will officially be in Sagittarius energy at that time. And that will be happening at 7.05 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're also going to have Venus sextiling Pluto, okay? And so this day, to me, is really going to be a power day. Because the sun in Sagittarius... It's going to amplify the the expansiveness that Sagittarius naturally has um, because it takes the energy and um, the the what's been conquered by the Scorpion energy by the Scorpio energy and really just you know wants to go forward, claim new lands, learn new things. This, you know, there's just like this renewal and rebirth that truly happens. Like this is really um, Sagittarius to me is the most mature version of the evolution of consciousness that we have through each of the fire signs. So the Aries energy is the, you know, the youngest energy, the, the probably the most innocent or purest, but it's the, it's ultimately going to be the, the least mature because it hasn't had the experience of going around the entire Zodiac. Then we get to Leo, which is, you know, really self-identified and, and learning its own gifts and creative, creative expression and how to work with others. But then when we get to Sagittarius, it's, you know, it really is where Leo is the king for sure. Sagittarius is king priest. And so there's a deep conviction of self that has now been earned and birthed. And the sky's the limit at this point. So this day is really going to feel good, especially with Venus, um, sextiling Pluto because Venus has everything to do with our personal values, our, our, um, our worth, you know, how we relate to money, how we make money. Same thing with Pluto, except in a, a larger, uh, more powerful context. So, you know, this may be another, uh, a day where you're making some power moves, um, or moving things forward in a way that, um, you might not have done, done before. This, <laughs> this kind of feels to me like it's, um, a CEO day. Like you might really just be feeling like a CEO this day. <laughs> now, um, on the next day, November 22nd, we have Neptune going direct in Pisces. So thank the Lord, uh, Neptune will be direct, um, because that's been kind of amplifying that Chiron in Pisces energy, which is also, um, retrograde. So there's going to be a little bit more clarity now, a little bit less fog. 
So that's amazing. So basically for the rest of the year, um, the only uh, planetary body we're going to have retrograde at this point is just going to be Chiron. So we should be seeing a lot less triggers happening. You should kind of feel that the, the steam picks up. You start to feel life flow uh, more, but in a more easy pace. It's a little less uh, triggering. Triggering. You don't have to be as vigilant, hyper vigilant about your feelings and you know navigating boundaries and all that kind of thing. I think that um, this should be a sigh of relief <laughs> for us. But that's going to be a huge day as well. And lastly, on November twenty seventh, we have Mercury conjuncting um, Saturn, and that is also in the sign of Sagittarius. So we're going to have. Sun and Sagittarius, Mercury and Saturn and Sagittarius, um, you know, all at the end of the month, but Mercury and Saturn will actually be together because they're in the later degrees of Sagittarius. So this is going to be an amazing d day to, excuse my language in advance, but get shit done, <laughs> okay? Uh, because Mercury is all about the mind, you know, it's quick thinking, it, it learns, it, it adapts, and then you have Sagitt uh, Saturn, which is the, the disciplinarian, it's the master. Um, it's the energy of making sure that you are dotting your I's and crossing your T's. So you should really be getting a lot of stuff done at this point. And then, um, you know, if you are signing any contracts, you're going to be really... I will say if you're signing contracts around this time, it will be easier for you to be discerning about what you're signing to and really make sure that you're getting what you are supposed to be getting and what you're valued at like you're you're not gonna um go for uh somebody trying to pull the wool over your eyes you know just because they think that you don't know like you're you're gonna know and you're gonna be very discerning um but with this energy as well too it also can be really stubborn energy possibly so you know just just watch it there <laughs> All right, so we're going to finish up now with the uh, asteroids. So the asteroids are the um, the ones that I'm going to focus on besides Chiron, which I was speaking of earlier, are the, the goddess asteroids. And those are the ones that are found between Mars and Jupiter um, in our solar system. So we have Ceres, which is an uh, asteroid related to the, the mother energy or our relationship to our moms and mother. And she's going to be in Leo for the entire month. Then we're going to have Pallas, which is more the father or the dad energy, um, or the relationship that we have to that energy showing up in Taurus, retrograding for the first half of the month. But she also retrogrades back um, into Aries halfway through the month. So first half of the month in Taurus, and then she um, goes into Aries. Now, Juno, which is the, the asteroid related to um, partnerships and how we show up in partnerships and the, um, the dynamics of power and giving, receiving and making sure your needs are fulfilled. She's in Capricorn, um, which is the same place as Pluto right now. And then we have Vesta, which is more of our true self, um, our divine spark, our, our soul's heart. She's in Libra. Uh, for the first half of the month, and then she goes into Scorpio. Now, what's interesting about Vesta is she is almost almost exactly mirroring uh, Venus's transit right now because Venus um, also was in Libra for the first part of the month, and then she goes into Scorpio um, in the later half of the month. So um, you are definitely going to be feeling again more self-empowered and that Scorpio energy is going to be amplified amplified for you um and let's see anything else I want to say about that no I think that's it so yeah if you um if you do your natal chart you can kind of see where these uh where these ladies are showing up for you um to kind of get a little bit more more in depth but that's the the astrological weather for the month of november i hope that that was amazingly informative for you if you would like to get your own personal reading to actually see how this is going to affect you specifically reach out to me for um, either a 30 minute or a 60 minute booking you can do so by shooting me an email or booking on my website innocentalchemy.com and like i said for more detailed um, information, you know, more day to day, I do weekly astrological forecasts on my Facebook page, which is Inner Sun Alchemy, or on Instagram at Inner Sun Alchemy. Okay, so you can find me there. And I, of course, I also do tarot too. 
And then if you um, haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate the support. Please like the video and comment below if this was helpful for you. And um, also subscribe to my newsletter. If um, if you go to my website, you can. Uh, there's a little uh, box at the bottom. You can sign up. I'm going to be releasing. Uh, a lot of fun products coming up in the next few months. Um, you know, courses, I'm going to be doing a teleseminar. So I do have some goodies uh, for you guys to enjoy and partake in. So be sure to sign up for my newsletter so that you can be the first to know about what I'm doing. All the best, best for you <laughs> for the month of November. And I will see you in December. Much love. Bye.